I'm beautiful and lovely gamers. My name is John Day. We're talking about flanking, off angling, uh, in general, how to pressure most people. Um, there's a bunch of misconceptions about this, so we're gonna break this down in a very theoretical and you know nicer fashion, like I like to do on this channel. Of course, a like on the video, subscribe if you like the content. Always helps out. Now, besides that, uh, when this video is live, I'm streaming on Twitch. I'm coaching, so if you guys want to get coached. Um, or something like that if you guys uh, want to just watch me break down a lot of people or watch league ask me questions talk to me have a great time in general just enjoy the game I will also be playing the game myself I will be streaming from now to like six to eight hours uh, and I'll be doing that today so Friday tomorrow so which is Saturday and then Sunday um, for about six to eight hours from 2 p.m. Norwegian time all the way to 8 slash 10 p.m. Norwegian time depending on how good it goes and so on and how, how energized I am um, so yeah, I hope I see you guys there. If you have, if you have joined the channel and you want to support, there's also a way that you can now can donate uh, on the stream and so on, and send me a personal message or a link or a highlight or something to check out. We will do guess my SR. So all of that stuff. If you guys want to join guess my SR, send me a montage, send me a vod that you want me to review and so on. Um, so just go onto a Discord server and there will be a stream chat right there. It's called um, Journal Stream Chat or something. That way you guys can send links since you cannot link in my in my Twitch chat because of a ad block spam block whatever it's called you guys know what i'm talking about now i hope i see you there so join the discord join the twitch both of those link down in the description okay now let's begin the video so off angling and um flanking is on flanking is when you go for example like this here in hollywood right lovely lovely hollywood we all love this map totally never been full hold on that in the tournament not gonna talk about that today um so yeah so, <laughs> uh, off angling something like this, like for example, the key decides to rotate it all the way over here. That's a flank, right? Because normally it would go for main, and now you're going here. Now, a flank, and I cannot specify this enough, this is not a flank. You didn't flank here. It, like, in theory, you're on the flank, so like on the side of your team, but you didn't flank in, in the category where what most people talk about when they talk about flanking. This is claiming high ground, and more, more directly, um, off angling so here you have taken an off angle from where your team would be pushing right it's very common for divas let's say uh, on sarias to do in goats to increase the damage output it's very common for tracers and genjis like to do tracers of course can do full flanks also hands also called like this so this is like a very common genji position there's a very common hands of positioning um to do right the same goes if you play here while you when your main group pushes this is just your main group this where the career is standing is still an off angle it's not a flank it's hasn't you haven't actually rotated behind and on the flank and at that point um there's a couple of flanks on hollywood right there's you know this one which gives you access to that one then there is when the team pushes main right because then to push the payload as attackers um this is one flank as this access the back line and this is another flank which accesses uh, the um, which access the backline. And then, uh, for example, you can call uh, this also a flank in fury. If, the, for example, the enemy team is respawning here and pushing up this gate uh, to contest, then this is in fury also a flank. Outside that, we're kind of running low. This is a flank when your team pushes here. This can be categorized to a certain extent as a flank, but it depends on where your team has been pushing. Um, and this can also be categorized as a flying, right? Essentially, you, you're, you're purposely leaving the route that your team was pushing, right? Your team was pushing main all this time, right? So they have been running, you know, run down mid, right? Run down main, blah, 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 right? Like this. And just been running like that. So you have been taking these side paths and side alleys. Now, why should you flank? Well, flanking, of course, if done correctly, gives you a huge opportunity. Uh, to, to catch people off guard, it's an easier way to access backlines. This is why Tracers love it, right? For example, a Tracer can flank over here to catch a defensive uh, setup from a, the support lineup. For example, right? This might not always be the best map to do it, but it, it works. The same goes, for example, to go here, right? To hit the backline while the enemy team is contesting here, right? Since the support are normally holding there. So it's an easier way to access backlines. It's an easier way to apply pressure from where they are to kind of surprise people. It works really great. No illness when no one has game sense. So you've probably seen, you know, classic uh, uh, silver or like gold high noons or something like that because the enemy team doesn't have the game sense to stop it. Uh, and that's what it's good for. Essentially, it gives you the drop on the enemy in the back line, which in theory should, of course, give you an advantage. Now, here comes the problem. Logically, there are a bunch of weakness with setting up a flank, and that's why I always uh, advocate for off angling normally over flanking. Um, the problem with this is, first of all, doing the flank is resource heavy. Um, when the, when your team pushes and you are like trying to do an off angle, 
this off angle takes time. Even with like someone as Tracer, you burning blinks here will do that you don't have all your blinks for when the fight comes, right? So it's it's very heavy resource messy because now it became a 5v6 instead of, and therefore this is a very heavy. That's why you will see Tracers and higher elos do setups. So we they will they will flank, they will for example put themselves here. Normally they would take high ground if possible, but let's say they will put themselves here. There's an enemy Senyara uh, here, right? And then your monkey will take uh, top of, of the houses, uh, where is it Winston? Your monkey will be top of the houses, not inside, but on top of this. Then your monkey would go, your tracer would go, and then you guys have set up a dive on the back line, right? So then the tracer flying to set up the dive. Um, that is very, very common to do, but notice he has to set up before anything happens. The same goes for Nambani on first point. You would, you would flank through blue all the way onto the back line of the enemy team, uh, onto that's defending top right. And you will do that as a setup, and then your team can push. Now, it's very reasonable because you, you're leaving your team. So if your team pushes at that point, which is, let's uh, let's just face it, it's solo queue. So, you know, that's going to happen. Um, it's very reasonable. It's going to be 5 or 6. Um, on top of that, you're splitting yourself. So, for example, I see a lot of Kree's flanking for some weird reason. Which, in my book, makes very little sense, right? So, doing a flank like this, first of all, it takes ages to do. Second of all, he has no sustain, no mobility. So, he can't disengage this flank. So, if he gets pushed... He is easily killed. Um, and yes, while well, he can do value, because he will get like line of sight that he normally wouldn't do because of a shield. Right? And if someone push him, he can hold the bin and flashbang and find the hammer. He's not very good at flanking because of his survivability. He's easily poked out and just zoned out, right? A couple of shots onto his body. And, you know, he's low. And at that point, it's very difficult for him to take a duel. And it's very difficult for him to die. And this is where, where the biggest part of the flying happens. That you split yourself from your team. Meaning you're on your own at that point. You probably won't get heals. You won't get shields. You won't get... There's a big chance that you won't get follow-up from DPSs. And at that point, you're very, very stuck. So you're relying on high mobility and hopefully survivability. That's why tracers are good. Because of recall, a lot of blanks, right? You can in theory flank with soldier because of his periodic field and his uh, sprint. And because he has damage to follow up. Also Sombra because of Invis and Translocator, right? All of these can do flanks because of their high mobility and high survivability heroes, right? Genji, for example, would not like to do this because he's not high mobility. He's like a dash that moves him 15 meters. That's not a lot in Overwatch. He doesn't have a self feel. He doesn't have anything outside of the dash. And the other thing he has is Deflect, which doesn't really help on the flank. Uh, on top of that, like, he would normally like to have the, the dash for the engage on whatever he flanked. So if he burns the dash to move more backwards, he's out for 8 seconds and so on. And as I said, as soon as you get poked down very early, you're out of the fight and you can't do anything. Um, now, that is kind of the risk and rewards. If you want to flank, what you should do, and this is especially go to Tracer Place and so on, um, try either to, of course, look for an opening pick, like someone that strafes, you know, out of out of the pack. So if you see, like, a Sen here, then, of course, kill him if, if that's possible. But normally what you want to do is you want to wait for a team to push, or at least for something to happen in main. It, like, if you're playing very low elos and people don't push, I get it. Um, but at least make your team, okay, my team is, like, here, they're, like, getting shot at and people are doing stuff. Because at that point, their attention is that way, not this way. I uh, mean, there's a bigger chance, especially in low elos, that they won't bother with you because they're not paying attention to you. And at that point, you can very big, but you can very, very much abuse this to your advantage. Um, so, so let your team be the bait, if possible. Let your team be the bait. Now, not going to think that I advocate for, and that's off angling instead. So let's say Genji. This goes for Genji. This goes for Hansos and so on. Now, off angling is that you take a different angle from where your main group is standing, right? So again, my Ryan is here, my majority of my team is here. So the enemy team is blocking that way so by me going up here again i'm creating crossfire uh, as a genji player right so i'll just drop another rhine to represent their main group let's find there we go okay so let's say that we're playing something like this right so they're trying to hold the corner and we're pushing in right i take this high ground now i can decide to either shoot the rhine i can potentially uh, harass uh, here which wouldn't be ideal for genji this is more for hands oh um, but i have access to I can bully whatever if he has sorry here. If he has support on the point, I can harass them. And again, I'm in 15 meters, so if any of those is slow, I can dash them and kill them. So I'm applying a shit ton of pressure just by being here. And that's pressure that this guy can't block because he's blocking my main, right? The same goes if you're playing sorry. From here, you can fo you could, for example, uh, this is a very, very bad example to do it, is that? So let's push a little bit in because or else this is going to be same as feeding. Let's say you're playing goats just because goats is such a good way. A Sari can off angle like this. A Diva can uh, off angle top and your Ryan can push main, right? 
uh, with her uh, with his uh, with his big break in the back line in the back backing him right at this point the Saria is denying can can damage anything that's like here to here right he, he can damage majority of everything so applying pressure on this side the diva is applying pressure from here onto the rhine onto the back line eating gravitons and whatnot and here it doesn't take long for Saria to rotate back in the rhine is pushing in main and th at this point you can kind of see how it's possible for the rhine to block all angles I mean our Saria can be very aggressive um our diva can be very aggressive and if they don't off angle here so if their diva is down here and if their Saria is down here right at that point they don't have that does not look like a penis i don't know what you guys are talking about um if they are playing like that it, at that at this point they are very much in night space the sorry cannot push out because at that point the ulti will get beams she will she will lose damage on her engage and we can easily punish her and then rotate back in right uh, at the same time the ryan is facing facing a lot of damage our diva has the upper hand up top here and can shoot down on them so we have advantage by by off angling here that will just give us more damage output higher damage output and at that point we can very easily snowball them right as long as we have more damage output we will start snowballing the the ryan help will start being very very low on health we can normally shoot directly at him so all healing goes to the ryan meaning no healing goes to the off tanks meaning the off tanks cannot duel our off tanks right and at that point they are low on health they're low on resources we have claimed space we can off angle we can push even more at that point right then that point we can push them even more because we have health advantage they don't right and that is the beauty of uh of angling and so on there's also not some stuff that you would like to see from other players um to land better nades and bigger nades right so to set up off angles and so on for example if if the enemy team is defending potentially you know down here and you put your ana up here right at that point you know we are we're kind of fucked a little bit because we now by the ana being there we have to we can only play here right if we push like this uh, we either have to try to constantly matrix her, which is very difficult, or like push up with the diva, which can be difficult because of numerous reasons, like uh, other people being up here and so on, um, or um, uh, or we get antenated, right? So that's the problem with this position for Diana, with her being up there, she's taken off angle from our team, allowing a different a attack approach, which we can't easily block. But if she's just in main, if she's just in main, and and we then we can just push for free, then we can just like double you into them. And that's a very big difference. Off angling creates these amazing uh, advantages. And I will just show you this. Uh, this is some Hansu gameplay that I caught uh, late at night to stop skill decay. Uh, so yeah, okay. So I wake the Sombra. Feels bad, man. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm shooting at the May. The May get pulled. She dies. Uh, right? And I take this angle. I mark here. I hear the Sombra. So I kill her. And now we are off angling. Right? Now it's... Because I'm here, the Risa cannot hold any further up. Than what she's holding right she has to fall back into hotel because i'm there now i'm very scared of a hog here so i'm playing like this um uh, i'm gonna rotate down here the hog for example tried to take a a what would be considered a flank right her his team is main group so he says she's split right so he's but in theory flanking but it's more than he's split right so his team is there the hog is there so he's now isolated and needs to kill right which is a common mistake for flanking um here we go here right and now we have this the senyata was here for some reason and blah, blah. Now we start pushing, right? The Sombra is on our backline being a bitch. Good job, Sombra. Uh, main wall, I get picked here. That's not what we are talking about. So let's just speed up this even more. Going high ground. Okay, right. Now, again, is this a flank? Yes or no? The answer is no. I have claimed insanely far up. Like, I've claimed a lot of space because, again, what are they going to do about me taking this space, right? Nothing. So I'm taking a lot of space. But I'm not off angling. I'm now I'm not I'm not flanking, right? I'm still playing on the path of my team. I'm not going down here. Right? So I'm not I'm off I'm not off angling. I'm just claiming a lot of space. And because of high ground and high ground is king, I'm safe. This is me uh, choking to a Cree, uh, which is very fun. So I back off here to make sure I don't die. Take an off angle on the Rhine, right? Again, forcing him back. Uh, that caught him out. Now there's two people there. This is just something I like to be mean about, right? Like they have, it's very clear they're gonna be on the health pack, pushing in the sand, because I didn't think my hog was gonna do it. And that's a free kill, right? I'm pushing even more. Again, off-angling. Making it difficult for them to do anything. Right? The Rhine is, for example, there, right? Like, if, even if he had had team to back him up in one feeding, right? You can notice that kind of at, at this position here, I can just shoot down on him, right? Because I'm an off-angle. Very, very, very strong stuff. So now, okay, the Ana is over here. She splits. We go for the kill. Uh, uh, we missed that, so we rapid fire because we are petty like that. And now I'm flanking, right? Because, essentially, I know... The fact that, okay, they need to push. Like, okay, they need to go here or be cap. So I can... Now, I don't want to play here. I could play top 
and just get angles like that. But I know that essentially I don't want to be here and I don't like being jail right now. I don't want to be jail right now since I was already over here. I could climb back up and off angle, but why not because of how they respawn? Why not go here and then fight them early, right? I'm, I can be safe in the doorway and I have my angles. So I see the send here. So I go in here. He stands still, which this is like top 10 reason why you should never stand still, right? At this point, I'm just kind of like, you know, holding this. We're pushing in and so on. Right, um, but this is like a flank that I can accept, right? Because again, the risk of me getting pushed at that distance is very low. Somebody beating my hand, so very low because I have one shot potential, uh, and I was still safe enough to fall back to my team and still be able to fight. So even if I had been low there, I wouldn't have taken myself out of the fight. I could easily just rotate it out, right? Same goes with here. Um, you could again call uh, this side that I'm on right now a flank. I would still like to call it off angling, um, but you could in theory call it flank because as soon as I push through this door, right, I split very heavily. I, well, right now I'm I'm more I'm more you know off angling. This is more of an off angle while pushing through the door. In theory, it could be considered a flank, um, even though I would still like to call it just an off angle because I don't think that it has the negative uh, impacts of flanking where I get heavily split from the enemy team. Um, yeah, and this is I think this is just us building them and whatnot. Yeah, not really much happens here, but you can kind of see how this works, right? The Ryan is stupid enough to play top here for some weird reason, uh, so we deny like this space. And I'm stopping him from pushing. He cannot push that way down to the objective from here because he gets shot. And if he pushes past this area, I shoot him again, right? So for me standing here, because I'm off angling, by me standing up there, I'm denying this entire area. But playing here, I'm just like, this area, you're not playing. You can play here, right? And then I can play here and do very much the same so that I can deny all the way up to here, right? So all of this is again denied, right? So, okay, I can essentially, by, by just putting myself at off angles... I can essentially deny him down to this little box. Which after that it becomes difficult because this area is very heavily contested normally by enemy team. Um, so yeah, I hope that this helps a little bit with your flanking experience. It's a really good way to get new angles and, and find picks and access the backline and whatnot. But it's super fucking risky. Just time, It's time consuming. It costs you resources. You're normally split. You should only use this on very specific heroes or in very, very specific scenarios where you have so much overwhelming force. For example, a, a hidden, like a flanking shadow or something from a high ground, which like essentially you just immobilize the entire team. So, you know, they can't really punish you if you immobilize them um, and so on. But normally start off angling more. It gives you so much more control of the fights. It gives you so much more angles and damage output. And it's just so such an easy way to get free kills. So, I hope I'll see you on the stream today. I like the video and subscribe if you like the content. I love you guys very much. My name is Jonah, and you guys, as always, keep the enemy in your closet.